mais, mais voilà. OK. Um, RECPOT, uh, so the Recovery Pathways uh, study was an international uh, study funded by um, different um, funding agencies in Belgium, uh, England and the Netherlands. And in this study, uh, we focused especially on uh, recovery pathways of women, uh, because there is in the literature some indications that uh, women tend to engage later um, uh, in treatment and also uh, may, may drop out earlier uh, unless they are addressed appropriately uh, during treatment. And uh, we especially listened uh, dur during interviews, during uh, other uh, methods we used, like the photo voice methods, uh, methods which I will talk about. Uh, we listened to the voices of people in recovery. Important, uh, and it also affects our results, we focus on three recovery stages, like within the first year, early recovery, from one to five years in recovery, and those longer in recovery for more than five years called stable uh, recovery. Importantly, this uh, study was set up with people in recovery from an addiction to illicit drugs, so to cocaine, uh, amphetamines, cannabis, heroin, etc. So often, of course, in combination with alcohol, but not so alcohol addiction. Um, like I said, there is three uh, main parts in the study. Uh, the, the main part was the quantitative study that started with an online survey of over 700 people, which we followed up at three points in time, at baseline, at follow-up, uh, OSF, and uh, at uh, actually we did the follow-up also after uh, the first lockdown to see whether people remained uh, stable also in that period. And that was accompanied by two qualitative studies, one on in-depth uh, interviews, uh, 30 in each country, and a specific uh, project, Photo Voice. I will show just a preview of it today. Tomorrow, we will focus on it more in depth. Um, recovery was like self-defined by the participants. So meaning that uh, people were deemed in recovery when they said they are in recovery. And, but of course, for recovery, we expect that there is some, some change in the behavior uh, from while they were in active addiction as opposed to in uh, recovery. Uh, and we um, distinguished between five typical methods to change behavior. The first two are like self-help and peer-supported uh, groups, like uh, mutual aid groups, AA, NA, uh, or other peer-based support groups, uh, recovery groups. The third method is outpatient uh, uh, ambulatoire uh, treatments, Residential, uh, residential treatment, and fifth, uh, people who are in recovery without formal treatment, without formal health, so-called natural recovery. Um, these are the findings uh, of a first study that we published in which we looked at the uh, effects uh, of uh, recovery stage, uh, early sustained stable recovery on uh, some recovery indicators, and most of these um, indicators uh, were like significant or there were significant differences according to recovery stage, while for uh, differences between men and women, we didn't find any uh, significant uh, difference. Um, I'll briefly focus on the uh, qualitative uh, study uh, and which we, uh, because I already mentioned that uh, gender uh, was an important focus in this project and we wanted to reach equal groups of men and women in this study. So we had, especially for the um, interviews, we had equal numbers of men and women, uh, 15 uh, men, 15 women in Belgium, also in the Netherlands and uh, England. And we looked at um, yeah, the dynamics underlying uh, change. So what helps people to 
uh, yeah, to set the step towards uh, recovery, to initiate recovery, but also to maintain. And we looked at it from a classical uh, criminological perspective, the turning point uh, perspective, eh, in which people identify turning points in their life to change uh, uh, their behavior. And what appear to be very important turning points, you see it at the left side of the slide, uh, are like four or five um, critical turning points. These are not real moments, eh, but uh, a repetition sometimes of uh, events eh, that make that people change their behavior. And the first one is negative drug-induced experiences, like a psychotic experience or a bad trip, etc. Eh? That's a very important or can be a very important turning point. At the right side of the slide, you see some elements which are not real turning points, not real events, but rather uh, contextual circumstances that facilitate the, these turning points. Yeah? Um, for instance, yeah, the uh, friends or people surrounding and supporting people to, uh, to go to treatment, for instance. Yeah? Uh, the second important turning point was becoming a parent, yeah? becoming a mother or a father uh, is for many people an important catalyst for changing their uh, be behavior. Yeah? Again, this is not like black and white. Eh? It, this will only happen if some of the contextual factors mentioned at the right side are also there. Um, the third point, eh, third turning point, hitting rock bottom. I think this is a very known uh, concept, eh, like uh, being very bad off, uh, being in the worst situation possible, having lost a lot eh, is also uh, an important turning point, uh, but there should also be, of course, a perspective, perspective a future perspective there. And finally, uh, as a fourth turning point then, addiction treatment, uh, um, participation in treatment is important to change, again, the behavior, but also for this, uh, it is important to be surrounded by a social network that is positive and optimistic, for instance, about the possibility to change. To change. Yeah. So the uh, elements at the right side, I won't go into these deeply, but basically, again, we didn't find many differences between the men and women uh, involved in, in this uh, sub-study. And um, yeah, of course, becoming a parent uh, is a different, uh, or at least uh, for mothers, uh, a different experience as opposed to fathers, uh, but still it will depend on support around you, uh, around uh, yeah, having a, a sense of self, a future uh, perspective, etc., whether people will change uh, behavior. Recovery is not considered to be a linear process, uh, but rather like described in the um, picture below uh, as a very unpredictable and often non-linear uh, process. It's a complex interplay of different experiences. Good. Finally, I want to focus uh, briefly on the uh, PhotoVoice uh, project. PhotoVoice is a qualitative research method, a participatory research met method in which individuals make pictures uh, about their daily life. Uh, in this case, it was about what made you initiate or maintain uh, recovery. And they use these pictures to go into discussion with colleagues, with uh, other persons in the same uh, situation. Yeah? Um, so uh, it's a very powerful method to uh, give people tools to maybe talk about things that are difficult to talk about. Yeah? Because uh, they make a picture of maybe uh, um, a nice uh, place they, they see and that remind them of their drug use or better of uh, a future uh, perspective. We involved eight persons in this process and tomorrow um, the main researcher involved in this project and one of the women participating in the study will uh, focus more on the process and, and the outcomes but um, it led to a very nice uh, photo book that we made uh, and that reminds of several steps uh, that helped them to 
actually change uh, their uh, behavior. And the photos are really artistic uh, because also we uh, worked with a semi-professional photographer who helped these people uh, make uh, very nice and creative uh, pictures. So at the right side, you see a nice uh, picture that, that one of them made. But throughout the process of making pictures, there were also different themes, different topics that were uh, discussed and that were really crucial for these women to, uh, yeah, to be and to uh, make a step towards recovery. The first step was like uh, rebuilding me, like the identity change that they need to go through eh? because they need to go from an identity as being an addict, uh, a drug addict, to be uh, a, a new uh, person, an ex-addict, uh, a mother, uh, a loving partner, etc. Uh, rebuilding me is, is very important uh, for them, after all, what they have been through. Uh, second uh, important element is untangling what is life, uh, what is the essence uh, at the one side, and on the other hand, what is addiction. Uh, uh, because because of their addiction, everything got intertwined, and it's important to uh, set that aside also to to be and to uh, to be in recovery and to maintain uh, recovery. Third uh, important element is connectedness, uh, belonging to a family, belonging to a social uh, network, and becoming reconnected because often people lose all their social connections due to their uh, addiction. And finally, uh, and also related to the previous one, related also to what I just said uh, about the qualitative interviews, uh, future perspective, hope, optimism, and that people can change their life is something very uh, important. You find a link to this uh, photo voicing recovery pathways uh, project uh, through that uh, link that is mentioned uh, here. Good. Finally, and to make also the link to um, Julie's uh, presentation and uh, some conclusions that came out of, of this uh, study, but also of uh, a collection of articles that we uh, published in a journal as a special issue, uh, made clear that, that women face different challenges uh, compared to men while in treatment and while in recovery. When it comes to recovery groups, to self-help, uh, it seems to be very important for men to be together with other men and to have an, a social support network. While women uh, uh, in recovery groups, they tend to take most advantage of learning uh, how to be more self-efficient self about their uh, drug and alcohol use. So the, 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 the aspect of connectedness seems to be less important for women as opposed to men. Yeah? Uh, women experience more mental health and family needs. I think this is not something uh, new. It's something we know. Uh, women are often more confronted with adverse childhood uh, experiences and multiple types uh, of, of stigma. And that brings me to the, the point that uh, gender sensitive, gender transformative uh, treatment and recovery services are uh, needed. And of course, also the uh, observation that what I just told uh, uh, is, is just a view on men versus uh, women. Uh, we, we had very um, few uh, participants in the study who self-identified with another gender. Uh, but it would be, and I think this is also that can come out of the gender ARP study, uh, to know more about people with other gender identities, how uh, they uh, achieve recovery and, and what challenges that they experience in that sense.